Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Java OpenGL 2D game development tutorial series. I have got to come up with a shorter name for that. Alright, today we're going to start leveraging our animation system, uh, which, as you remember um, from previous episodes, uh, we've already built the animation system. Right now our player is just a single image, and that's why we don't really have any animation going. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create some animation for our player. Now, I don't have game art skills uh, to speak of, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the website opengameart.org right here, and we're going to get this animated top-down survivor player. I will uh, link to this in the description of the video so you can find it yourself, but we're just going to go and download top-down survivor.zip, which I've already done. Um, and since I've already done it, I'm just going to go ahead and import it into my project. As you can see, we've got uh, various folders inside of Top Down Survivor. Um, it's got like the the feet of the character, which uh, animate for running, and they remain constant through all of the things. So what we're going to do, we're just going to start first by uh, loading the let's say the rifle. We've got the, this player with a rifle like this. So I'm going to go ahead and load. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and drag rifle in to our project window. Actually, I'm not going to do that because it might do something crazy with the package structure, I just realized. Eh, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to drag rifle into res, copy files and folders, and click OK. And yeah, it does kind of do something a little weird there, uh, the way it creates these packages, but that'll be fine. Um, so, you've got, for example, this idle animation. This is how we're going to use our animation system. Basically, our test player in the test player class, animations equals new animation array with a length of one. So that's just one animation, that's idle, right? So then animations zero is equal to a new animation. Then animation zero dot frames equals a new image resource array. Then we loop, or right here we don't do we don't do a loop because we've only got one frame. But what we would do right here is like so: we're going to say for int uh, sorry int i equals zero. I is less than, and I'm making typos here already. Okay, i is less than. We've got to look at how many frames are in our idle animation. There are, let's see, zero one. Uh, they're a little out of order here, you can see, because we've got 0, 1, 10, 11, 12. So we'll just look for the highest number. Highest number is 19. So from 0 to 19, that's 20. So i is less than 20, i++. plus plus. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say animations 0 dot frames i is equal to new image resource, and the URL we're going to give it it's going to be, sorry, double quotes here. It's going to be slash res slash rifle slash idle slash survivor. See, I'm typing in what it says right here. Survivor dash idle dash rifle underscore. Now, right here, the one that we want to load is the one with a number equal to I. So we're going to go into here, and we're going to say plus i dot two string, I believe, like so. Uh, no, sorry, that's not right. <laughs> string dot value of i. <laughs> Making some pretty basic mistakes right there. Uh, and so that's supposed to load all the frames into there. We can now get rid of these last two lines right here. Now, let's see what happens when we start the game. We'll see if it loads all of our images and uh, plays them. OK, it's constructing the tile set. And where's our player? Okay, something's up. I'm going to quit. Okay, here, we're getting an error. 
uh, the error is illegal argument exception image io image resource java test player right here okay so something is not loading correctly oh um, yeah you got to add dot png to the end of that string so you got the beginning of the string then the number as a string and then dot png or else it won't load so silly mistake on my part let's go ahead and start it again and it constructs the tile set and it still fails. Let's find out why. Oh, nothing. Perhaps it hasn't completed the tile set. It constructs the tile set. And nothing is happening. That makes me think it's failing again. Let's find out why. Okay, we're still getting the same error we got before. Let's debug this real quick. We're going to go system.out.println we're going to print out this same string that we're constructing inside of the new image resource thing. This way we'll find out what it's printing, what it's trying to load, and what is failing. Okay, so we wait for it to fail, and then we quit this. Let's take a look. Um, hello? Now what's gone wrong? Grass tile. Okay. Now we are getting errors that I do not fully understand. Let's okay, it's trying to load that while I quit it. Uh, I quit too early. Start again. <laughs> okay, that's probably long enough. I need to reduce the size of the grass tile map right now because it's getting in the way. All right. So it's failing on the first one. OK, um, you probably have caught this before I did. Uh, we're doing survivor-idle-rifle. It's supposed to be survivor-idle-underscore-rifle. Oh, yeah. I just sort of glossed over it when I looked, looked at what we were supposed to be loading. So go to un <laughs> we'll replace that dash with an underscore. So we get survivor dash idle underscore rifle underscore the number dot png now it should load but before we do that I'm gonna go into uh, I believe it's in main I'm gonna go into main and reduce the size of this tile set to 10 by 10 instead of 40 by 40 because it's getting a little cumbersome to load at least for my computer it is and it looks like it fails again let's quit it and find out why Array index out of bounds exception one test player twenty three. Um, okay, uh, yet another mistake. Here animations zero dot frames equals new image resource with an uh, image resource array with a length of one. That should be with a length of twenty, because that's how many images we're loading. In fact, what we should be doing is right here where we say i is less than twenty. We should be saying i is less than animations uh, zero dot frames dot length and we should be doing that so that we only have to change the size of an animations length once so let's go again I will get this working alright now we are getting somewhere now as you can see the animation points the wrong direction but it has at least loaded, so that's something. Now I'm not really seeing much in the way of movement. Ah, that's because our frames per second is, isn't correct. What we need to do is set the frames per second for this animation. So let's go ahead and once we've loaded our uh, images, actually we can go ahead and do it right now, um, just above the image loading. We're going to say animations 0 dot fps equals well, let's say we want it to take, let's say 10, because we want we want it to take one, yeah, say two seconds to complete. Let's see what it looks like then. Now you see we got that little movement right there of the character breathing. That's kind of cool. I'm going to change that to, I'm going to say 15, just because I want it to be a bit faster. And there we go. 
Now, obviously, he plays that animation the whole time, and he points the wrong direction, but at least we got that much working. So, to fix the fact that he's facing the wrong direction, there's a couple of ways we could go about doing that. Um, one of them would be to rotate the image that we play for him. Um, but really, that seems like it would be a little more complicated than it needs to be. But we can do that, because we, we can't count on all of our sprites being pointed so that forwards is always up. Uh, unless, of course, we're working with an artist and we can specify how we want them to do it. We could go in and rotate all these images, but that sounds like it'd be too time-consuming. So I'm going to start... Uh, I'm going to change that to... Um, we could... we could since, we, since everything is an animation, really, we could... We could just modify our animation class and give it a rotation, uh, except that that's not where we actually play the animation. Where would, it, where would it be that we play the animation? I believe it's in Game Object, now that I think about it. If we go into Game Object and we look for Render, yes, okay, we say graphics.setRotation, Rotation, graphics.drawImage. What we can do is, since this is the rotation of a game object right here, we could add an alternative property and just call it, uh, let's see, I'm just going to add a comment here, um, rotation offset of the animation, and we're going to say, or rather I should say, of the renderer. What we're going to do is we're going to give it a public float and call it um, graphics rotation and set it to zero by default. And basically what this is going to do right here when we say set rotation rotation plus graphics rotation the reason why we're going to do that is because then we can just tell this game object to have a different um, graphics rotation I'm uh, for lack of a better explanation it's it's literally what it looks like it says we're just going to in like in test player for example uh, in the constructor we can say um, graphics rotation equals 90 for 90 degrees. Now that might be wrong, it might be negative 90 now that I think about it, um, to rotate the other direction, and yeah it is. So let's give it negative 90. Now obviously the easier solution would have been to just make sure our artist drew uh, our graphics properly for our game, but that's not really with our, in our inside of our control at the moment. So now, as you can see, he rotates to look at the cursor and points his gun in that direction. And he animates. So that's kind of cool. Now if we want to create another animation, which we obviously we do, one for running, we can do the same thing. Let's see, animations um, is a new animation array with a length of 2. Uh, animations 0 is a new animation. Let's say that animations 1 is also a new animation. And this one's going to be our run animation. And so we define the frames and the FPS for the first animation, which is idle, let's do the same thing for the second animation, which is run. So set these both to 1. Uh, everything else should be the same, but we should check to see how many frames are in the uh, move animation here. res.rifle.move has also 20 frames, so we can leave that alone. Now all we got to do is duplicate this for loop i equals 0, i is less than animations 1 dot frames dot length, animations 1 dot frames i equals new image resource, res, rifle, idle should change to move, and survivor move underscore rifle underscore the number plus dot png. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see, right here we've got x input and y input, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a check right here in the update method and say if um, x input does not equal 0 or y input does not equal 0. And the reason why we're going to do that uh, is because that will tell us whether um, our input keys are being pressed. If any of them are being pressed, then we want to change the animation to run. And so then all we got to do is say 
Uh, how did we do this? I believe in game object we'd get, yes, current animation is a number that corresponds to which animation we want to be playing. So we'll say current animation equals 1 instead of 0. Else current animation equals 0. So let's see what happens. We start the game and we load our player. He's, he's idle right now. Let's see what happens when we press a key. Nothing. Everything looks exactly the same. No, actually it doesn't. He's still, he is actually running. The animation is different. It's just that without the feet, it's hard to tell that he's running. Uh, so what we're going to do, let's, I want to speed that one up, definitely. Uh, speed that up to like, say, 30 frames per second. Speed up our running animation, that is. Better. Let's bring that up to like 50. Because I really want him to be look like he's, you know, really running here. So the idle, he can just be, he can just be slow, but the running I want to be faster. As you can see, that's what we've got now. So now anytime we press a movement key, he starts running, or appearing to run. Now in the next episode, we're going to create the, uh, we're going to combine the feet and the upper body animations so that we can actually see, you know, his legs move when he runs around. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, please uh, leave a like or subscribe or whatever. Uh, if you've got any questions about what you saw in the video, then please leave them in the comments and I will do my best to respond. Uh, next video, hopefully we will get to creating the composite animation for our player. Uh, so thank you very much for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video.